Well, hey, LifeSpring. Um, today, uh, we talked about this idea of what do you do in the meantime, in the time period between where there's this thing that the Lord has promised to restore, this thing that God is going to make better, this amazing future he has for us, and the current reality that we presently experience that's just not great. What do you do in the meantime? Um, and one of the things we said is you let your pain become a launching pad because um, often our defining points in our life are actually our pain points. Um, and those pain points can either become a prison through which we view everything else in life and it holds us back, or they become a launching pad through which God moves us forward into our destiny. But the question may come up in that, um, what about when the pain is not my fault? Like when I have nothing to do with it, I don't bear any responsibility for the pain. Like, what do I do in those moments? How do I process that kind of pain? And that's a fair question. And the truth is, all of us will go through pain points that there it's not our fault. We have nothing to do with it. So what do you do that? And how can that kind of pain actually become a launching pad that moves us forward? And so I want to give you three ideas real quick. Um, the first thing that we need to do for that pain to actually become a launching pad for us is we actually have to face it. Um, in fact, a really good example of this is the entire book of Lamentations where the prophet Jeremiah is just weeping and pouring his heart out to God over the destruction of Jerusalem. And so I never want us to think that the way forward with pain is just pretend like it doesn't exist, just stuff it. That's actually super unhealthy. That's even toxic. You have to actually face the pain that you're going through, even when it's not your fault. And I would say especially when it's not your fault. You have to face it. You have to process it. You have to grieve through it. You have to let the Lord minister your heart and soul in that. Um, you can't turn away from it and just pretend like it didn't happen. You have to face it head on. Go through the process of grieving. Go through that um, and let the Lord heal your soul through it. And part of that process is the second thing, which is you have to forgive. Um, when there's somebody else that, is, that, had, that, that did something especially, um, you have to forgive that person. Um, it's almost cliche, but I would say it's not cliche because it's true. But unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. Um, our pain never becomes a launching pad when we hold on to bitterness, we hold on to resentment, we hold a grudge, we don't forgive. We have to face the pain and then we have to forgive. And forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness can even be a moment by moment choice. Forgiveness is not, well, I said I've forgiven them and that's it. No, forgiveness is every single time it comes to mind, you choose to show the same grace that Jesus gave us. Um, that Jesus gives you, you forgive them. You choose by an act of your will empowered by the Holy Spirit to not hang on to it. You forgive um, the pain. You forgive the person that inflicted the pain. And then the third thing um, is simply start taking steps forward. You move forward into the future. And I would say that a specific way forward is this. Um, this will be painful. It's very uncomfortable. I've been there. But one of the best ways for pain to become a launching pad is to ask God, how might you want to use the pain that I've been through uh, to minister to somebody, to serve somebody in a similar situation? Um, and my wife and I have actually seen um, our pain um, be used in that sort of way. Specifically, um, we miscarried uh, our first um, back in 2018, um, and that was unimaginable. We didn't want to go through it, never want to go through it again, wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, but God has used that um, in our lives to, to serve and minister to and love other couples that have faced the same thing. Um, and that's often the way God calls us forward is to actually use our misery as a platform for ministry. And in that sense, it actually does launch us into the future um, in a way that deeply impacts and affects other people. So I want to encourage you guys with this. I know today was heavy. Um, trust me, I felt it as the guy preaching. Um, but man, one thing I've learned is when things are really heavy, um, man, God wants to work in our heart deeply in those areas. So I hope uh, this brief reflection of today has been life-giving to you. Um, Sean will be preaching next Sunday. We'll be in the New Testament, starting with the Gospels, the written accounts of the life of Jesus. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have had a week to get used to the new time change, and hopefully we'll have some nice weather. I love you guys, and I'll see you all next week.